Coming up on the social hour, the Nike fuel ban is the talk of South by Southwest. Wait, what? Kevin Rose is joining Google? Wait, what? Is Tout Rider fad? I don't know. You have to wait and see. Coming up next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the Social Hour is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is the Social Hour with Sarah Lane and Amber MacArthur. Episode 51, recorded Thursday, March 15th, 2012. This episode of the Social Hour is brought to you by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to create a high quality website or blog. For a free trial and 30% off your new account for three months, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code SOCIALHOUR3. And by Ting.com. Ting gives you big savings and billing clarity for mobile phone service. Try their online savings calculator and save $50 on your device purchase at Ting.com slash SOCIALHOUR. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Social Hour. It's episode 51. And from Petaluma Twit World Headquarters, I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm Amber MacArthur from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Amber. So anybody who's watching the show live knows that we are recording the show a little later in the week than usual. We usually record at 11 a.m. Pacific, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time on Mondays. But it's later in the week because you were sick and now I'm fighting a cold. What's wrong with Uh. us? I know, I know. Yes, I was sick. I'm feeling better now. So uh, good news, we were able to uh, reschedule. And it's kind of cool now because you are home from South by Southwest, Sarah. And uh, I need details about what went on down there. So South by Southwest was, uh, it's funny because I was I was trying to take a bunch of notes over the weekend. I got there on Friday and I was there until Tuesday. So it was for the interactive portion of the show. Anybody who's not familiar, South by Southwest is... It's kind of broken down into three categories. You've got interactive, film, and then music. And I was just, the interactive is kind of, you know, the geek portion of the festival. So I thought, well, we're going to do the show on Monday, and I want to, you know, bring a lot of stuff to the table, things that I've seen. And there wasn't a whole lot that really rose to the top as in, wow, big breakout startup of the weekend, or, ooh, everyone's doing this cool new thing. And it's really going to shape the rest of 2012. It seemed like, um, for the most part, people were more than ever using the tools that made the most sense as far as communicating. Because there's just a lot of people there. And sometimes service can be spotty, depending on who your Mm -hmm. carrier is. So, for example, um, I watched the Foursquare keynote, uh, Dennis Crowley, um, talking about how they launched Foursquare three years ago. And... Um, you know, they've been very successful. Um, one of their competitors, GoWalla, actually just shut down while I was at um, South by Southwest, which is an Austin, Texas-based company, which is where the the uh, the convention is. So that was kind of sad um, because oh. GoWalla was a good product, but GoWalla and Foursquare actually launched just about three years ago to the day. I and, remember that. Yeah, with very similar business models. Um, they had a different look and feel, but the idea was checking in and sharing those, you know, that location information with your friends. So, uh, and then we talked before I left for South by Southwest that Highlight and the whole idea of proximity apps, um, and anybody who didn't catch that show where we talked about how Highlight works, it's uh, a sort of a way for me to... I have my GPS pinging the service uh, constantly so that if I come into a geographical contact, let's say at a supermarket or, or a cafe or something with someone that, let's say, my Facebook friend Amber MacArthur knows, Highlight would, would ping me and let me know what I had in common with this person and give me an opportunity. Yeah, I see a picture of them. Give me opportunity to go up and introduce myself, say. Highlight happens to be an extremely big battery drain, it turns out. Oh, because it's not, no. Yeah, it's not based on me checking in to, some, you know, like it's a, it's a passive check-in almost. So my phone in the background is just uh, checking in with my GPS <coughs> at, you know, at, at, at some sort of interval, I'm not exactly sure, but very regular intervals. And battery life goes kaput. And at South by Southwest, when you're walking around and you're not near your hotel room to charge your phone, nobody wants a battery drain. So 
I saw more than anything people saying, Highlight might be a great service, but I'm not turning that thing on. I have to preserve my battery life. And, you know, I've got my Mophie pack and I have to yeah. be smart about this. So it seemed like that was kind of a, you know, almost like a kaput type of a hype thing once we actually got down there. You know, it's funny. I think you're exactly right because I'm thinking of past South by Southwest uh, events and there is always some big theme, something that comes out of it. Oftentimes it's a trend that sort of sets the stage for that year in technology or social media. Um, And I was watching what was coming out of there and I really didn't get a sense of uh, many services that were sort of, you know, had that that big wow factor that we have seen in the past with like in 2009 with location-based services, um, you know, with Twitter years before. um, But but uh, yeah, there was nothing that was a, a, a bit of a standout this time around. I agree. Well, okay. So we talked about everything that wasn't a standout and that some of the, the tried and true apps seem to be doing just fine, almost as if there's really no reason to invent anything else um, that changes the way that we go about our daily lives. However, a company that is maybe the antithesis of startup is Nike. <laughs> Uh, who uh, came out with something called the Fuel Band, um, which I was lucky enough to to get one uh, down at South by Southwest. This is um, similar to the Jawbone Up or, I mean, even I guess the Fitbit in a way where you wear this smart bracelet, uh, which is, you can take it on and off. Um, It's pretty comfortable. There are a variety of sizes depending on how big your wrist is. And it tracks your movement, your activity, how many steps you've taken in a day, uh, how many calories you've burned based on your height and weight that you have to tell it and how old you are, things like that. And it gives you a, sort of a fun, it, it's almost like a gamification for sports because as you can see there, there's a, it, it, it's called the fuel band, but it measures something called fuel, which is an aggregate measurement of calories you've burned, steps you've taken, how much you weigh, because of course, if I weigh 110 pounds and someone else weighs 210 pounds and we both run a mile, the larger person will burn more calories. So you yeah. can't really compete with people based on, you know, caloric uh, burn off alone. So fuel is a little bit of, OK, based on all the information you gave me, um, let's uh, go for a goal of 6,500 for the day type thing. So you can see as you go along about your day how much fuel you have burned. Um, and when you get to the end, if you indeed get your goal, it flashes goal at you, which is very, uh, <laughs> you know, soccer uh, or football type based. Stuff. So it's actually pretty fun. And this thing it was definitely the talk of Austin. Nike had yeah. a big presence there. They had a this huge, gosh, it used to be, it's called the Spaghetti Warehouse, this big, big restaurant that is no longer in business that they gutted and they made this kind of crazy LED, almost like rave type of a scene inside with loud music and people were lined up around the block to get these fuel bands because they're really hard to get right now because their pre-orders, pre-orders are sold out. I think they're about $150 retail. And uh, everybody, everyone was like, yeah, cool, fuel bands. We're all wearing these. And it's like, I thought to myself, it's weird that something from Nike seems to be the thing that people are most excited about. And of course, Nike has the money to put together, you know, a well-designed product and there's a corresponding And give them away. (laughs) Right, right, exactly. Nike can give these uh, sorts of things away um, and create a lot of buzz. But it seemed like a very different show this year when the biggest thing that's coming out of, you know, geek spring break, as it's dubbed by a lot of people, is something from Nike. But, you know, don't you think that's almost a sign of the way that things are going with social media and with the web, how everything in this space is, you know, the corporations have a bigger role than they've ever had before. Um, And, uh, you know, it it just seems it doesn't surprise me too much. But I wonder if South by Southwest maybe has lost a little bit of that charm that it had many years ago. I'm trying to think the first time I went, but it was a long, long time ago. And I don't remember Nike or any big brands being around. Yeah, it totally. Um, it's it's uh, South by Southwest was. I, I don't want to say that it's over or that it's jumped the shark or anything because I said that last year and then I went again. It's really really fun um, for anybody who has the opportunity to go. There's a lot of energy. There are a lot of happy people there, and people want to meet each other and network and and it's all of those things. But there is absolutely no denying that the big brands 
are, are in the know now. And mm-hmm. you could even argue that they've taken it over. So uh, it's it's just, it's. I guess it's inevitable um, for shows like that. It, you know, if you're popular enough, uh, the big companies will find out and they'll come and they'll make a presence and there's going to be a lot of sort of branding and marketing at, um, thrown at you. And it doesn't mean that it's still not um, a fun event, but I did notice that it it seemed a much more uh, I don't know. I guess it's, it's, it's there's there's no well kept secret at all as far as yeah um, having fun at South by Southwest. <laughs> so would you go next know. year, Sarah? Yeah, because Austin is such a fun city, yeah. and. There really are a lot of people there that I know that you would know. I mean, walking down the mm. street, it's like there are 20,000 people there from out of town. And I'm still recognizing a good portion of them. I'm not sure why. It's just it seems like there are just so many like minded people in one place. But yeah. it's, uh, but it's you know, it's a big party, too. So I think yeah. that it just depends on um, wh- what you want to make of it. Mm hmm. Very cool. All right. Well, that's a good little uh, summary from South by Southwest. I also felt like the there wasn't as much chatter online about it. But um, again, maybe I was just sort of filtering it out on my own. But um, I remember last year, it just you mean you could not escape it, uh, and this time around, it felt a little more uh, subdued. I think. So Amber, this is not actually on our rundown, uh, but uh, a former Dig employee just sent me a link to an article over at All Things D, uh, written by Liz Gaines, that our dear friend Kevin Rose what? is joining Google. I just saw the headline before Sarah said that, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Now, we were going to talk about this a little bit later in the show, that um, uh, Milk, the company that Kevin Rose founded uh, with Daniel Burka, um, and had released, sort, sort of as an incubator, um, they had released about, I think about four or five months ago, their first app, Oink, which was yep. designed to rate your experience. It was sort of like you could you could rate just about anything, whether it's food or a movie or a type of clothing, whatever. And they had announced that because of uh, just the way that they wanted to focus the company and, and engagement on Oink, which had definitely gone down because it was pretty much me and Oink employees the last couple of months using it, uh, that they were going to shut it down and then just give the team time to refocus their efforts. Yep. Well, I had asked him, Amber, yesterday, hey, do you want to come on the social hour tomorrow? Amber and I are shooting at a different time and talk a little bit about uh, what Milk is doing next, because obviously you guys have something in the works. And he said, oh, I'm traveling. I can't. But when I get back to town, let's totally sit down and I'll tell you all about it. Uh... Well, I didn't have any idea that it would be because he was joining Google. So wow. what, are the, what are the details? I'm just trying to look this up online as well. Well, okay. Um, let's look at this. Uh, okay, Milk announced yesterday it was shutting down its only product, Oink. Okay, got that. Google is not outright buying or acquiring Milk, but Rose and some others from the company have been hired. It's not uh. clear what will happen to Milk after Rose joins Google. Uh, Google's not commenting. Uh, <coughs> Rose isn't uh, responding. But apparently his first day at Google is to be this coming Monday. In wow. In four days. That's it. wow. That's a huge surprise to me because I just, I guess I just, um, I, I, I can't imagine him kind of going, you know, that going into an office working for someone else when he's had such an entrepreneurial back background. But if they let him run something, maybe on his own, and I'm sure it's a great opportunity. Yeah, it's interesting here in this article, and, and again, nobody's officially commenting on this, so I'll just have to, I'll have to go by Liz's sources, but she does point out. Um, He's, uh, Kevin has a big following, which he does. Um, he was a suggested user on Twitter way back in the day. has millions of followers. Um, they do call out Tech TV. Yay! Um, and that he was uh, very popular because of Dignation. Also true. Uh, by far, Revision 3's most popular show. Um, and says, maybe this kind of fan engagement could be a boon to Google+. Plus. Google+, uh. Plus, of course, has been... There's a lot of chatter about whether it's kind of just languishing, whether it's a flop, whether it just needs more time. But it's true. I mean, stars, not just Lady Gaga or Nike type of stars, mm. but actual uh, people who are online all the time and have kind of a rabid fan base of tech people uh, is something that Google Plus needs more of. 
Oh yeah, they definitely do. Yeah, that could, that can make some sense. I mean, especially uh, with Google Plus on the mobile front. I mean, it would be great to see some improvements there if you had any say in that. Because um, I, I feel personally just as the um, the mobile app, and uh, I'm on an Android device. It's just I don't know. It's sort of lackluster in many ways. Yeah. Wow. I am just trying to take this all in. What a nutty day. Yeah, um, that is a, a yeah huge surprise, but. Uh, <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah, it would be fun to get him on and to chat a little bit about it. But if he has to go back to work on Monday, who knows? Yeah, really. He- Gosh, that is, that is just crazy. That's crazy talk. We live in, I mean, things just change literally on a dime um, in our line of work, uh, which is why this show is so fun. <laughs> We've always Especially, got stuff to talk about. It's so great to have so many people emailing us and letting us know what's happening during the show as well. It's always handy so we can stay on top of stuff. Yes, and th- <laughs> yes, thanks to everybody. Um uh, although I did see the link originally in iMessage from a friend, I did see somebody in chat before I actually got to it, um, also linking to the All Things D article. So thank you, everybody, um, for keeping us honest. Um, okay, so we will certainly revisit this because we only know what we know right now. But um, let's move on with the rest of the show because there are other topics to talk about. want to quickly remind you, uh, again, we usually record The Social Hour Live on Mondays, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. For all of our live viewers, we are shooting at a different time. Uh, this week, but we will be back to our regular time next Monday. And I should say that we have uh, Guy Kawasaki on on Monday uh, talking about uh, his new book on Google+. Uh, yes, absolutely. That should that be is, fun. Yes, and we've had him on the show uh, before, but it was, uh, I think, almost about a year ago now. So. Yeah, I think so. We, we had him on when he was talking about um, his uh, book, Enchantment. Um, so uh, he's going to talk about the Google Plus book that he just put out in ebook format. Um, and, you know, he's all over Google Plus. So uh, I'm sure he has some great tips for people if you want to tune into that show. Yes, uh, please do. Guy Kawasaki, I mean, he's just so much fun to listen to. Um, obviously, really smart guy. Also, was at uh, South by Southwest. So he can yes. talk a little bit about. Um, his his panel there and and maybe some of his takeaways from the show and see if they jive with mine. Uh, reminder that if you ever miss a show or you want to go back to that Guy Kawasaki episode and see what he talked about way back in 2011, you can go to twit.tv slash TSH. That is the Social Hours website with all of our archived episodes. So any episode that you missed, whether it's last week or a year ago, you can just go ahead and find it in our <laughs> lineup. And all of our show notes um, from each episode are uh, included on episode pages along with embedded video. So you can go ahead and download um, a video file. We have an audio feed as well if you just prefer to listen to us rather than see us or you're driving or you're commuting. Um, But those are the best ways to make sure that you don't miss anything that we talked about on the show. That's also where you can subscribe to the show too. So if you uh, want to just have the show be downloaded into iTunes or however you like to subscribe to podcasts that's the way to do it and then you never really have to think about if we're shooting at the same time or if we're on some sort of special holiday (laughs) schedule or anything like that so again twit.tv slash tsh is where you'll find all of those links gosh i can hear my voice going all oh no sarah i can hear fisherman's friend i know i need fisherman's friend i've got zinc in my purse so I'll do that after the show. Okay, so let's take a moment to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this episode of The Social Hour. Squarespace is the easiest way, and I really mean that, to create a very beautiful, high-quality blog or, or even a website. It doesn't have to be a blog. If you say, I don't know, I don't have anything to say, that's okay. All you have to do is go to squarespace.com and actually just look at their examples page, and you get a sense of all of the different kinds of websites that people can build using Squarespace templates. They give you a bunch of templates right off the bat that are beautiful. So if you have, I don't know, you're kind of a budding photographer or you have a video podcast and you want to basically just embed videos on a regular schedule and add some blurbs and some links, or maybe you are a poetry writer and you want a place to put that all down on paper and you want it to look professional. Uh, I mean, these, these templates are absolutely beautiful. And the thing is, is what's nice is that not only do they give you a bunch of templates to start off with, but you can edit them if you want to. The idea behind Squarespace is not everybody knows how to write code, how to edit CSS, 
anything about design, and that's okay. It shouldn't keep you from having the beautiful website that that person next to you who does know all those things knows. Um, they want you to be ready to go right off of the bat. I mean, look, it's just absolutely gorgeous stuff. But if you do like to hack around and you want to make a custom design, you can absolutely do that, um, either from scratch or you can go ahead and tinker around with some of the templates um, that they start you off with. They also have great widgets. Um, widgets is, is what saves me from having a website that seems like I haven't updated it for a million years because I used to write a lot and I don't write a lot anymore. On my Squarespace website, I have it set up so that I've got a Twitter widget, a Flickr widget, um, links to my Facebook page, places that I actually am active so that my site is constantly dynamic and updating and it's not sort of this, uh, this burden where I feel bad because I've got this website that obviously looks like I've completely abandoned it because I haven't and my, and my uh, website reflects that. So Squarespace is, I, I can't tell you um, how, how much of a joy it's been to work with the team. <coughs> We've got great customer support. Um, I've had a million questions over the years when I've sort of gotten myself into a design hole and I'm not exactly sure what I've done. Um, they're very, very helpful. They get back to you right away. And the, the back end is just, it's, it's easy to use. They've got good stats. Uh, you, can, you can easily manage comments. I use my iPad app constantly. <coughs> Bless you, Amber, to uh, to make sure that you know if somebody has a, you know a spammy comment or something like that, I can just easily remove or edit on the fly. Uh, again, Squarespace.com. Uh, go to the examples page and just get a sense of what they've got going there. And if you like it, if you like it, you can try it free. So right on the home page, uh, there's a try it free button. It's big and green. You can't miss it. Uh, you can go ahead and sign up and and hang out on Squarespace for a couple weeks. Build something. You don't need a credit card or anything that's going to get you if you forget to cancel in a couple of weeks. You basically just figure out a URL and get going. At the end of those two weeks, if you love Squarespace and you want to keep going, just use the offer code SOCIALHOUR3. That's the number three. SOCIALHOUR3, all one word, and you'll get 30% off your first three months of your Squarespace account. One more thing about Squarespace. People might say, well, you know, there are other blog engines I could use that don't cost anything. Squarespace has... Uh, hosting that is rock solid. So if for some reason uh, your site gets really popular, you get to the, uh, the top of dig. Remember when that was the kind of thing that would take down websites? I guess it still <laughs> does, depending on, depending on uh, what the link is. Uh, Squarespace will stay up. Cannot be taken down. That's a guarantee. So uh, thanks again to Squarespace <laughs> for sponsoring this episode of The Social Hour. Sarah, I love the way you did that. You pointed at the camera for people who aren't watching the video feed and said, that's a guarantee. That's, I guarantee it. Sarah and I, both our voices are going to be all over the place uh, during the show, like we're going through puberty or something. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very true. So, Amber, uh, we, talk, we talk pretty often about the idea of social music, sharing um, what you're listening to, uh, what, you know, what albums you like with your friends. Uh, both RDO and Spotify are probably the two biggest streaming music applications um, that have free models, but also uh, subscription models. Um, and RDO actually just went ahead and rehauled its entire design to make it uh, even more social. And I have been playing around with it. It, it not only is different on the website, uh, which is at rdo.com. That's R-D-I-O. So radio without the, without the A.com. But also uh, the OS X app, uh, which I'm running. It's actually the way I kind of prefer to use RDO. And what's nice, Amber, is that I'm now looking at, um, let's go ahead and look at uh, my heavy rotation area. That's um, what... Uh, what is being listened to most out of the people that I follow. And you can see all the people that I'm following on the right-hand rail. These, some are friends. Some are just, there's Kevin Systrom. He's the CEO of Instagram, for example. Um, some are just uh, Def Jam Records. You know, I figure, oh, they probably know about albums before I do type of a thing. But I can see that uh, Some Nights by Funz, very popular album right now, um, all of my friends who have listened to it recently... There's nine of them, nine, nine people that I follow anyway. Um, so that gives me an idea of, oh, John Crawford listened to this. John Crawford and I hung out recently, and we really like the same kind of music. Maybe I should add this album to my collection, or at least, um, you know, give it a go and find out a little bit more about it. So 
I think the audio is has tried to set itself apart from Spotify because Spotify's the the bigger uh, the, the bigger service. Um, they have, yeah. uh, I think, I, they've got more um, more albums overall. They have more users for sure, and they're more um, visual on Facebook. Although Ardio uh, will 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 tie into Facebook just like Spotify does. But Ardio wants to set itself apart from Spotify as being the more social, social. experience. Yeah, I, you know, I really like it. Uh, it, it's really amazing. I've been watching a lot of what RDO has been doing and especially in terms of their outreach and their community building. Um, they just have coming up with some really creative ideas. I also think their approach as far as... Um, attracting people on a global level because we had mentioned this before when we had one of the um, executives from RDO on the show uh, is to kind of roll out in different countries all over the world um, and offer this service and kind of bring that community of music lovers together it didn't really matter it doesn't really matter necessarily where are you where you are um, uh, across the planet so uh, it just seems like they just you know have all of their uh, ducks in a row so to speak and are going to end up coming out on top because I've just heard so many positive things about them and, and I've seen them just be so creative in their approach and um, just the kind of grassroots efforts to be able to get out there and, 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 you know, reach their users and, and give them what they want. Exactly. Um, Spotify for its part, um, they had a presence down at South by Southwest um, in a panel. Uh, The Spotify CEO pretty much said, listen, we've still got artists who don't understand our model, who, think, well, why would I get like a very small little royalty fee when somebody plays the song on our service, which is kind of how it works, rather than a much larger chunk of the uh, of the fee if somebody just downloads a track or an album off of something like iTunes, because it's less if you put them together. But you figure, depending on people's habits, you know, streaming music isn't for everybody, but... Um, if I'm the kind of person who had never heard of this album by Fun, who's Fun? I don't know who Fun is. Wow, all my friends are listening to this album. Well, I'm much more likely to play through it. And if I like it, maybe I'll play through it a hundred times. That's money into the artist's pocket that they would have never seen a dime of otherwise because I wasn't going to buy the album. Uh, yeah, Spotify it def- just uh, makes a lot of sense. in Germany as well, I believe today. So that's, you know, another big market for them. Also, uh, it's interesting is the Billboard Hot 100 formula is now going to include data from Spotify and RDO, oh, which wow. has got to make artists happy because, hey, you know, I mean, I... I might not be buying albums or listening to the radio anymore, but I feel like I'm pretty up on all of the the top pop music because it's rising to the top of, you know, what's being listened to in my networks. Very cool. Yeah, you know, it's a it's one of those things. I don't know. I think I I I kind of prefer audio, but that's just been my uh, uh, preference, especially with the mobile experience. Um, I just feel like it, it's really really. Uh, um, superior in some ways and and with all the social stuff happening it just seems like a really good fit for people because it is all about that sharing i mean i know for me all the music i listen to is based on uh friends and people i know who are recommending stuff so it's so so much a a big part of that yeah absolutely i guess uh if if they really wanted to be um i don't know hip and with it they would include data from youtube since there are so many of those Vivo videos on YouTube that are, you know, yeah. millions and millions of hits, uh, when someone wants to uh, listen to a song, that would uh, that would make I think the Billboard Hot 100 very relevant. But it seems like they're getting there, and I think it, it sounds like uh, Rhapsody and a couple of other streaming services were already included in the data. They're just uh, they're figuring out who else to include as well. So good for them. Slow and steady. Mm-hmm. All right, Sarah. So uh, the next story that you uh, dug up on the list is about uh, Google Plus uh, updating uh, their photo album organizer, um, adding uh, batch delete and uh, sorting functionality as well. And I mean, uh, that's what I I, li- I like Google Plus. I'm still using it, Sarah. Uh, I do. I find it limited sometimes in terms of some of the functionality. So anytime they roll out anything like this, I think it's good um, because they really haven't been that aggressive in terms of uh, adding new features uh, and uh, and uh, improving some of the functionality that's there right now. I agree. I I think uh, one of the things that Google Plus doesn't do well, um, in my opinion, 
is photo albums. Um, I know that uh, Google Plus, they've got Picasa. There are um, easy way to add albums to Google Plus, but if you even look at my profile sometime, there are a couple different albums where I have duplicate photos in because when I uploaded them, I wasn't really sure what I was doing. And I, figure, I feel like I know my way around a photo album pretty well. And if it's a little confusing to me, um, it's going to be for somebody else. Uh, and then there's the whole thing about people tagging me in photos that I'm clearly not in. And I just don't understand that phenomenon at all. But I think <laughs> photo album organization is extremely important. Um, anything that makes it easier for people to organize and just want to add photos to Google+. Plus, that's the thing. Um, and then, yeah, again, batch delete and sorting, uh, being able to you know drag and drop, that sort of thing. That just makes it seem like it can compete with... Yeah, I mean, even a Flickr or your Facebook photo yeah. albums, which work pretty well. Yeah, you know, I, I think we can talk to uh, Guy Kawasaki about this when he uh, joins us on Monday because... I have so many little questions about Google Plus in terms of improving the experience because I have uh, experienced a lot of spam recently in terms of commenting. I know this has nothing to do with the photos, um, but uh, great to see the improvements with the photos. But there still are a few areas where I think they can kind of um, enhance the experience. And I wonder if he has any tips to uh, to be able to do that because it, I've had a just a, a you know I, I'll, I'll post something and I didn't have this experience even just a month ago, and literally I'll get comments. I have no idea what any of them mean. You know, there's no no sense in. Uh, anything that they, that's been posted there. I can report all them, but that takes time, right, Sarah? Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, it that does. That gets a little bit frustrating. And, and, you know, that's not just a Google Plus issue. I have spent, because once I uh, turned on Facebook Timeline, oh, um, yeah, yeah uh, I yeah. decided, well, you know, for the most part, my updates can just be public. And so people can't post to my wall, but anybody can comment on any of the stuff that's public. And Most of the stuff that I'm sharing right now is public, and it's a mess. So it's not just a Google Plus issue, but it definitely is an issue. Um, So, you know, and and I don't really want to just lock down my account because that's not fun either. I like to share with people. I just um, want to figure out how to get rid of the spammers and just sort of the junk where it's like whatever that person's saying is not relevant and I don't understand. So I know. It's a, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's an issue with, I guess, all the big, all the big social networks. It's also oh, yeah. on Twitter too. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, it got to the point, I think, the other day for me where I was using Facebook and then that's between Facebook and Google+. And I almost just wanted to go to Twitter because I knew, you know, because I get to choose who I want to follow. I wasn't going to encounter any of this spam. You know, they, for the most part, were real people actually communicating right. um, because the conversation on uh, Facebook was just so horrible. I'm just kind of looking through my Facebook feed to see, um, you know, some of the random things that get posted. Um you know, just, uh, yeah, yeah, just bizarre. I mean, well, many different languages, uh, but uh, like, yeah, yeah, some of them I can't even read. They don't even make sense. There's no English to them whatsoever, uh, but uh, they're all over the map. So the experience has kind of been, I think, muddied a little bit and it'd be good to see, uh, um, like I said, maybe Guy has some answers for us, especially, particularly on the Google Plus front. Yes, uh, absolutely. I think my biggest problem is, hey, spam is spam. You can usually tell the difference between something that's spam and something that's just lost in translation. My problem with... Uh, the languages that I can't read is, hey, hey, I just can't read a language. Doesn't mean that you can't understand me. And it's, it's not yeah. so much that it's a problem that you're participating. It's that I, I feel like, well, maybe it not, might not bother me that much, but it's going to keep somebody else from wanting to engage in my comment conversations because they're just off the rails. Mm. And that's what I don't like is, is other people feeling put off by stuff that I'm putting out there because I'm attracting... Um, gobbledygook. Yeah. I mean, when, you know, 70, 80% of the comments are things that most people don't understand. It's not inviting (laughs) to a community so much. Exactly. Uh, So speaking of uh, Facebook, that's actually our uh, social tip for the week. Uh, This happened a few days ago. Facebook announced their uh, interest lists. So the idea being that you can create almost like your own custom news feeds within the Facebook experience. Uh, When I first read this, I wasn't that excited about it. But um, then I started to play with it a little bit. And I thought, oh, this actually, you know, it it, it makes some sense, especially as uh, you're trying to keep up with so many different people on uh, Facebook and you want to hone in on maybe a particular group of people or a particular topic. So really simple thing to do uh, within your interest list. Uh, On the left-hand side of the page, uh, you can create a list uh, for anything from 
you know, a topic like tech news to your favorite recipes, uh, to journalists that you follow. Um, I, for fun, just created a, a list when I was playing around with it just for tech friends. You know, I'd be able to follow Sarah and, and Leo and all of my other friends in the tech industry so I can scan through all of their posts. And I think um, it helps to really uh, target the conversation a little bit on Facebook for you to be able to uh, dig up some of that good stuff more quickly and uh, to search by topic just by having these uh, interest lists in place. Yeah, I think this is a great idea. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes perfect sense. My news feed is a wealth of goodness, but it yes. is all over the place. Um, and I think this, it reminds me a little bit of Twitter lists. If done correctly, they can be a great way to just focus on, I want to read about tech news for a little while. Um, or I want to, you know, I, I follow a lot of like eco blogs type of a thing. I'll put those all in a certain category because... Uh, I think a lot of people have the problem where if it's all in one big feed, it might all be relevant to you, but it's, 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 there's, there's too much to take in from too many angles. Um, I know this happens with me where I just, I sort of get link fatigue and I end up not really clicking on anything that might actually be an interesting story because uh, they're varying too wildly. Yeah, just too much. Um, and uh, there have been publications uh, like the uh, Washington Post, for example, uh, where some of their journalists have created their own interest lists uh, that you can follow on things like politics in Washington. Uh, and you can see more people doing this, you know, uh, creating lists that other people can uh, potentially uh, use and uh, uh, get targeted information as well. So, um, you know, this brings Facebook into uh, uh, that that more of almost like, a you know, a content consumption uh, um, platform form um, as far as, as reading news and consuming news, um, you know, not necessarily just about what your friends are doing or where they're traveling or baby pictures, all that kind of stuff, just an added element and I think in increased functionality to be able to, um, to target that. And just in case you're, you're going to your Facebook news feed now and saying, uh, I can't find it. Where, how do I turn on interests? Um, it sounds like it'll be rolled out to users in the coming weeks. Um, so if you're not lucky enough to sort of be a, <coughs> in the first beta testing section, uh, look for it. It's, it's, yeah. uh, it. It is going to happen. It just probably hasn't happened for you yet. It's not online either. And it's super simple to create them. So, you know, w once you uh, name your list, you can literally, you know, uh, just choose people who you want to add to that list who you're already following or pages or any of that type of information. Uh, the actual experience is uh, probably a lot more streamlined than I've seen in terms of other functionality on Facebook. Well, really very simple. cool. Good tip, Amber. Thank you for that. All right. So uh, next up, we uh, have our uh, spotlight. And this one is an Android app called Bounce. Um, now, I am I mentioned I am using an Android phone right now, which I absolutely love. And uh, I haven't had a chance to uh, download this app but because I've been sick, but I, I will try it. Um, the idea being that this app will help so that you are never late again. You know how to... You can always be on time because what it's doing is going to give you warnings and information um, to prepare you to make sure you're on time for whatever appointment is in your calendar. Um, it uses uh, GPS within your phone uh, as well as traffic data uh, to uh, notify you uh, when it's time to leave for your next meeting or appointment oh, um, cool. so you're not rushing out. So it's kind of like a nagging person. I was going to say mom, but then I realized I'm a mom and I hope I don't nag. Uh, but, uh, you know, a nagging person make, making sure that uh, um, you're aware of all the other factors when you're trying to arrive on time to some type of uh, meeting. Oh, this is great. I, I have this problem constantly where I will give myself, if I know that it takes 15 minutes without any traffic at all to get to where I need to be, I will leave with 14 minutes to spare. <laughs> and then I'll just rush, you know, sort of thing. And it's like, that doesn't take into account anything that might happen between point A and point B. So some, you know, some sort of like, you got to leave right now, or maybe you got to leave a little earlier than you thought in order to get across town because, yeah, there's some traffic issue. Uh, it, all of those factors um, matter and yeah. can be so frustrating because to monitor them is, uh, takes a lot of work and time. And uh, I, I love this. 
bounce. Yeah. So you just get a cute little notification like uh, you need to bounce for lunch. You know, it's time to take off so you're not late. So uh, it's like having a little personal assistant almost built into uh, an application on your phone. Uh, I believe based on what I had read, I originally found this, I think on Lifehacker, uh, that there is an iPhone uh, uh, version in the works. Uh, so that's good for other people out there who are uh, on uh, any iOS devices. Well, you know, I, I since I am on iOS devices, not Android, I don't want to say, ooh, it's cool that this isn't available to me yet. But that's but, what you were thinking, isn't it, Sarah? Well, <laughs> I, what, I, what I think is, I just, I know that there are Android users who get really sick of apps being developed for iOS first. And if they're popular enough, then they get, you know, uh, built again for Android or for some other operating system. So in a way, I think it's cool that sometimes the Android OS gets cool apps first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just, it's cool. Yeah, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to feel like, uh, like it's too one-sided. Yeah, and I, I shouldn't. Um, I didn't want to mention this, but I did read online a, on a site that uh, Instagram is coming out for Android any day now. But I think we've had that story about half a dozen times on the show. So, uh, but uh, looks like it's very close, yes. uh, based on what I read recently. Yeah, yes, it's. Uh, I think that there was a there was actually a version flashed on a stage briefly. Ooh. So yeah, it's, <laughs> yep. it's uh, years a, later. Any minute now. Let's all hold our breaths. No, actually, don't. Um, we got a voicemail, um, and Chad, just so you know, it, the voicemail starts off kind of low and gets progressively louder, so just keep that in mind. Uh, we're going to uh, hear about why uh, those QR condom codes might not be <laughs> such a good idea. Hi, ladies. On episode 50, you talked about the site that was uh, put up for people to, to check in with a QR code on their condoms so they could show where they used it. You didn't mention it on the show, but the first thing I thought of is that could be a really bad thing to have out there, especially on a map that was so granular where you could zoom right in on it as close as you guys could. Because what about uh, kids whose parents find out that maybe they're doing things they shouldn't be at the home? So that was my thought. It might not actually be as good of an idea as they thought it would. Maybe a good way to get aggregate data, but I don't know if showing all those uh, points on a map is a great idea, especially in today's day and age. So love to hear your thoughts on that. Thanks a lot. Love the show. You know, we didn't even really touch on the idea that let's say you were, and for anybody who's unfamiliar with what this is, the idea was, it was a um, campaign put on by, who was it? Uh, Uh, Now I forget the company. uh, A big company. I'll go back and look uh, at uh, our last show. um, That allows you to check into where you had used a condom, uh, promoting safe sex, that sort of thing. Our caller is saying, I mean, especially if you live, let's say, in a rural area or somewhere where if you were to check in and a parent or someone else is able to say, well, clearly that's our house or that's where you work or somewhere that's distinguishable on a map, that indeed could be an issue, I guess, if you're in the position where you don't want Yeah, people, that could be a bad thing. Yeah, who are your superiors uh, in charge of you? Uh, to know. To know. Yeah, it was Planned Parenthood of the Great Northwest, oh, okay. um, who was one of the organizers. Great voicemail and a really great point. So uh, uh, we need more stuff like that so people can <laughs> remind us of those type of things, Sarah. Right, exactly. It's like, look, in the Bay Area, oh, you might be just one little dot. But when you get out into the Sierra Nevada, you might be that very, very obvious <laughs> dot uh, where your parents will say, what are you doing? You weren't supposed to be home alone. Actually, you weren't alone. Um, All right, so let's move on to thank you very much for the voicemail. We hadn't had a voicemail um, that was uh, nice and short in a while, so thank you for that. Um, Tips in the future, you can uh, leave us a voicemail at 2626-SOCIAL. That's 2626-SOCIAL. We want um, them to be 30 seconds or less so that we can play them in the show. So keep that in mind, and thank you very much. Um, Let's move on to the meme of the week. I don't even think we've ever had one before. I know. You know what? I was looking for a tweet of the week and then I really wanted to cover this story. Uh, uh, many people probably heard yesterday uh, or Wednesday, if you're listening to this after uh, the live version, uh, about uh, the Goldman Sachs executive, Greg Smith, who resigned uh, from Goldman Sachs and wrote a scathing letter, uh, an op-ed in the New York Times. Uh, it's making the rounds, you know, one of the top uh, 
a post uh, viewed on the New York Times yesterday and shared all over the place. Many people commenting on it and Goldman Sachs trying to respond. Uh, well, it didn't take long for that uh, letter to go out before there were internet parodies. Uh, you know, people uh, writing their own blog posts and resignation letters and having a little fun with this. Uh, one of my favorites is uh, on the Daily Mash and it's called Why I Am Leaving the Empire by Darth Vader. <laughs> I'll read just the first little bit. Uh, Today is my last day at the Empire. After almost 12 years, first as a summer intern, then in the Death Star, and now in London, I believe I have worked here long enough to understand the trajectory of its culture, its people, and its massive uh, genocidal space machines. And I can honestly say that the environment now is as toxic and destructive as I have ever seen it. Uh, and he goes on and on about uh, throttling people with your mind and the, the stress that that brings about. And uh, it's just absolutely hilarious. So uh, a few of these floating around. And if you need a good laugh, if you're at work and you want to, you know, a little stress relief, uh, I recommend uh, looking some of these up. Yes, there were quite a few. In fact, I was actually, I was, I was duped on, way, on my way home from work yesterday. I listened to this NPR show called Marketplace. It's about economic news. And I love the host, Kai Rizdal. He's got this great voice and he's just fun to listen to. And as it starts... He says, well, you know, after 11 years, uh, I've decided to move on. It's been wonderful. I've, you know, I started out on the night shift and then I've been hosting the show. And I just have to say that uh, the uh, economic news uh, um, landscape is just too toxic. This is Marketplace. And they go into their news and I'm driving going, oh, no, who's going to oh. host Marketplace now? Jeez, gosh, he really sounds upset. Something must have happened. <laughs> And then he goes, just kidding. And then they went into the Goldman Sachs store. And I went, are you? I oh, just wrote a- in and said, that was rude. But I see what <laughs> he was doing. It was pretty funny. That's very funny. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of them uh, floating around. Uh, there's also another part of this letter from Darth Vader says, uh, my favorite line, the empire today has become too much about shortcuts and not enough about remote strangulation. It just doesn't feel right anymore. <laughs> so uh, a, a, a huge uh, bout of creativity on the web once again. Love that. All right, Amber, get ready for rad or fad. But first, right. we want to warm it up. Yep, warm it up, warm it up, do a little push-up. Uh, first, we want to thank Ting for sponsoring this episode of The Social Hour. It's a mobile service, if you haven't heard of it, that probably makes a lot more sense than the mobile service that you have now. It comes from two cows, the same folks that brought us Hover, who we also love here on The Social Hour, and it's all about billing that makes sense. So Ting is built on the Sprint Network, and here's what happens. It, it, you decide how many minutes uh, you're going to use ahead of time. Okay, so you've got you know, a fair pricing that bills megabytes, minutes, and text messages separately. So there are three different categories that you decide ahead of time. If you use less than you thought you would, then Ting automatically credits you the difference at the end of the month. Wow, wouldn't that be nice? No, if you end up using more, you're automatically billed for that additional amount. So it's not as if you have to think about it too much. You can figure out uh, what your usage uh, is going forward and adjust accordingly for the next uh, month. Ting.com has no premiums, no penalties. You just pay for what you use. They also offer 4G Android phones through Sprint. Um, And if you go to the Ting website, they have nice, clear graphic snapshots of your usage by device. Easy access to your billing information. You've got a lot of features that you can toggle on and off. Lots of help content. The whole idea is that Ting says, listen, the way that people um, are paying for mobile usage right now is crazy. You know, they're paying for text messages that they aren't using. They have to they have to uh, go in on a big voice plan because they're not sure how one month is going to be um, as related to the next. It's a waste of money. So Ting is going about it a completely different way. So if you want to save money and better manage your mobile phone usage, definitely try out Ting. It's a mobile phone service that makes sense. And I think if people really, really glom onto this, we might force the other carriers to start offering. Oh, wouldn't like that this. be nice? It sure would. Ting is, they're trying to change the game. And, and, and kudos to you, Ting. Uh, if you uh, enter ting.com slash social hour, you can save $50 on those uh, device purchases that they offer. A uh, few models of the, um, you can choose from HTC Detail. Motorola Photon, Samsung Transform, LG Optimus. They've got, they've got quite, quite a few phones there. So if you want $50 uh, 
off of mobile phone you were going to buy anyway, go to ting.com slash social hour um, and, uh, and make sure that, uh, that you use that code so that they know we sent you there. So thank you very much to Ting for sponsoring this episode of the Social Hour. And now on to Amber's <laughs> Rad or Fad. Rad or Fad. Okay, Sarah, I can't remember if we talked about this service before, but we have talked about similar services. Uh, the one I want to mention today is called Tout. Uh, short little 15-second video updates. Uh, now, this hasn't been the first type of service like this. There have been many be- before. Uh, some have uh, shut down because they maybe just didn't get enough traffic. This one seems to be generating a little bit more buzz, uh, particularly because a lot of celebrities have kind of jumped on board and are using it on a regular basis. Um, from a technological standpoint, you know, it's uh, not all that different from uh, what else has been out there. Um, but I think the community tends to uh, be a little larger and a, a little stronger stronger than we've seen in the past. So um, I guess the question for today then is, is tout rad or fad? Is this one going to stick around or is it going to go fall by the wayside like many other video status updates that we've seen in the past? What was the what was the uh, the twelve second version of this? Was it twelve seconds? Was, was that the <laughs> yes. name of that company? I think so. Which I, yeah, I which so. I thought was actually a pretty cool idea because yeah, me too. I sometimes don't click on videos because uh, they don't tell you off the bat necessarily how long the video is going to be, and sometimes it's easier just to scan a couple of paragraphs uh, instead of watching a video. But I liked the idea behind knowing something was not going to be much more than about 10 seconds. I mean, I've got time for that. So I like the idea of the 15 second or less status updates because it's a little, it's a little slice of life. I just don't know. It just hasn't caught on yet. I guess Mm. I can't think of any service where something of this, you know, sort of short spurts works on its own. I know on, um, on Path, for example, which is a social network that I'm using quite a bit these days. Amber, I know uh, you like Path as well. People are adding videos, certainly, but that's not all they're adding. I, I'm not sure how much I would like Path if it was just video yeah. uh, status updates. But um, yeah, hey, Ryan think- Seacrest is on Tout, so... I, so, I, I, there you go. I, I would like to see more of him in the bathroom washing his hands. <laughs> That's for a whole other show, Sarah. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's one of those things where I, I like little quick videos as well. The one thing I noticed with uh, little video updates is that, like you mentioned, you don't really know what's going to be in the update. And I, I say this because oftentimes I'll be surfing on my phone waiting for a meeting. And I just I don't want to click on something where I don't know what the content is. right? <laughs> um, so um, I think people have to maybe get over that hurdle a little bit. But um, I do see tout um, this particular service, these video updates, I, I see the company behind it um, potentially being able to um, you know, stick it out. And uh, this could be the one uh, service that people uh, definitely kind of uh, latch on to. So I think it's, I think it's rad, you know, assuming that uh, uh, the community stays there, continues to want to uh, watch some of these updates, and, and hopefully it's not just for celebrities. But the fact that, it, that celebrities, so many of them have joined up already... It's yes. pretty impressive. It is, uh, it sure is. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't follow Shaq on Twitter. Anybody who's listening to the audio version of our show, we're looking at um, one of Shaquille O'Neal's 15-second updates. He's a gum chewer, apparently, um, on, uh, <laughs> on Tout. And uh, this is the sort of thing where he's, he's kind of a guy with a big personality, and, and people like him. They think he's funny and interesting. And, and I might like something like this a little bit more than frequent... Uh, Twitter updates because there's a little bit more of that, you know, just that visual personality that comes through for certain mm-hmm. folks. Uh, but yeah, they've they've definitely got uh, Fran Drescher, uh, Amy and Nick. Uh, it's kind of well. Oh, okay. We're gonna gonna watch one of these. Oh, Fran, <laughs> somebody doesn't know how to hold the iPhone correctly. <laughs> I've made the same mistake many times. So. I think maybe maybe some of the celebrities need some uh, shooting tips. <laughs> yes, absolutely. No, I like this, Amber. I think I think I'll go ahead and say this is rad. Yes, I think it's pretty rad. I have to. Uh, um, I definitely have to uh, start using it because I th- I could see many cases where it would be just a simple little way to post a, a video update and share it online. Absolutely. Good one. So that's at tout.com, T-O-U-T dot com. And we're at the end of our hour, Amber. This was I know. It was fast. A whirlwind. Yeah. And I didn't I didn't cough too much, which was a big concern of mine. Uh, So uh, I made it through. Yes. And Sarah, you're okay now? I feel... I feel... 
I'm going to take some zinc and, and pound some emergency after the show. So I feel my voice kind of eh, but eh. I'll, I'll stay strong. I've got All right. two more days of work left. So thanks to everybody who joined us who, are, who was watching the live show at an unusual time. Again, we are usually live on Mondays at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. And you can always catch up with us at twit.tv slash TSH. That's where all of our shows live in perpetuity and infamy. You can also find our show on iTunes. And uh, if you like it, give us a nice review. I'm always looking for... That would be um, nice. Yes, validation that you like what we're doing. And if you have any questions, comments, or even criticisms, you can always email us um, at the social hour at twit.tv. Until next time, where we will have Gao Kawasaki as a guest, I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm Amber McCarthy. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye, everyone.